Hi everybody, in this lesson I want to give you an introduction to the graphing calculator. The first thing I want you to notice is the way that the calculator is laid out and uh, where the keys are located. So for example, everything that has to do with graphing is located right up here. These uh, five keys are your graphing keys. Uh, and then I have my basic operation functions and I have various functions on the calculator down here on the on the keys. You notice things are uh, semi-color coordinated here. Uh, you'll also notice that there are a lot of uh, letters that are above each of these keys in addition to the letters being on the keys and those are color coded with either the second button or the alpha button. And So if I wanted for example the square root function I'd have to hit the second button and you'll notice that it blinks with a little arrow there and then if I hit the x squared button I'm actually going to get the function that's above it, the square root. Okay, you'll notice that that square root is the same color as the second button. All right, if I want to clear my screen, I would just hit the clear button, and that'll keep it nice and clean. Uh, likewise, if I were to hit the alpha button, and I would then be able to access one of the alpha characters, and, and those are the same color as the, as the alpha button. So if I hit J, there's the letter J. Okay, so if I want to turn my calculator on or off, that key is down here. I just hit the on button to turn it on. And uh, if I want to turn it off, I'd hit the second and then the, this button and that would shut it off. Mine didn't shut off because it's an emulator on the computer and it doesn't ever shut off unless I close the program. Alright, so uh, if I want to adjust the contrast also, if you have a calculator that's running on, on batteries, then you would hit the second button and then the little up arrow over here and you'll notice a little number appears right there and as that gets higher that will adjust the contrast darker and the higher that number is if your if your keys are real light that tells you that your battery is getting low alright I'd also draw your attention to the fact that there's a difference between a negative button and a subtraction button on the calculator uh, that tends to give students fits the first time they start using the graphing calculator but if I wanted to, for example, figure out, use my calculator negative 2 minus 4, I'd have to hit the negative button, and then the 2, and then I want to subtract from that 4. And you'll notice that the negative is a little bit shorter and a little bit higher on your calculator screen than the subtraction button. Now if I were to just hit uh, the subtraction button for that, notice that it wants to subtract from the previous answer. Okay, so if I were to subtract 4 from that, it's going to take negative 6 and subtract 4 and give me negative 10. All right, now where we're at right now is the home screen. If you were to hit the y equals, you'd get a different screen, and this is where you can enter things into your y equals. You hit the window button, you'll get a different screen, and there's various menus. You hit the math menu down here, and there's all these different screens. So if you ever want to get back to the home screen where you can, you know, type things in and do some math, all you have to do is hit quit. So the quit is right above the mode button right here, and so to access it, I'm going to have to hit the second button. And notice when I hit second, this little up arrow right there tells me that the next key I hit is going to be one of these up arrow ones here. And that will quit and get me right back to the home screen. And again, if I want to clean up my home screen, I just hit the clear button and it will clear that out. The other thing I draw your attention to right off the bat is your calculator, if it's one of the newer uh, models with the newer operating systems on it, has a, a mode, if you hit the mode button right here, uh, the default mode is math print mode. And math print mode makes your uh, expressions look more like they are when you, you have them in a math book. And then there's a classic mode, and I prefer the classic mode uh, simply because uh, as you go on in, in the algebra, the problems tend to be easier to enter in classic mode, especially when you're graphing. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in classic mode. Okay, so let me quit there and go back to my home screen. And let's look at some basic operations, just how to enter these into your calculator. Alright, so for example, if I had 2 plus 3 times 4, doing a little math here, you know that, that by your order of operations, you have to do the 3 times 4 first do the multiplication for the addition. So this should be 2 plus 12, which is 14. So if I enter this on my calculator, just as I have it, 2 plus 3 times 4, 
my calculator, first of all notice that the times button is uh, illustrated on your screen as a little asterisk there. And that's, uh, your calculator is going to follow the order of operations. It's going to do the 3 times 4 first and then add the 2 and it will give you 14 as you expect it to. If I want to do the 2 plus 3 first, then I need to put a parenthesis around the 2 plus 3 and that will force the calculator to do those first and it will give me 5 plus 4 uh, or 5 times 4 which is 20. Okay. All right, now the other thing, um, if I wanted to do 2 plus 3 times 5, maybe I, I made a mistake and uh, I hit the 4 and I really wanted the 5. So rather than type all that in again, what I can do is I can hit the second button and then right above the enter button is entry. And I can just, uh, that'll bring up the previous uh, command that I had entered in there and then I can just edit it, go back and change the 4 to a 5. And so if you have a really long expression, uh, especially if it's very long, it will uh, be a lot easier to use that and just edit an expression rather than type it all in again. And if you keep any entering the second entry, then it'll scroll back through the expressions that you have in there. So if I wanted to uh, change the 2 plus 3 times 4 to 2 plus 3 times 5 here, I just uh, hit the second entry several times and then I can go and change that 4 to a 5. Okay. Let's do one more down here, uh, 2 plus 8 over 4. We know that's going to be 2 plus 2 plus 1, which is going to give me 5. All right, so if I hit 2 plus 8 over 4, so I just think of the 8 fourths as 8 divided by 4 plus 1. That will give me the correct answer. Now notice if I have 2 plus 8 over 4 plus 1, I'm obviously not going to want to put in 2 plus 8 divided by 4 plus 1 because notice that's exactly what I had here. It's going to do this. It's going to give me 5 and I know that that answer should be 10 over 5 which is 2. So if I have fractions with uh, uh, several operations in them then I'm going to have to use parentheses. Uh, I'm going to put a parenthesis for the numerator 2 plus 8 and I'll divide that by the quantity 4 plus 1. All right, and that gives me what I want. Okay, let's see how we do uh, exponents. So I got uh, 3 squared. Now I can hit 3 and there's a little square button right here. So if I hit that square button, that's going to square the 3. And you see it puts a little smaller 2 next to it. And that's 9. Now if I want a higher exponent, notice I don't see any Q button on here. So I'll use the up arrow button too. In, in, uh, uh, when you type exponents on a computer, you use the little up arrow button like that. And so it's the same key on your calculator. So 2 up arrow 3, that means 2 to the third power. That would be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. All right? So uh, let's show you a little bit about fractions here. If I want to enter fractions on my calculator, and my calculator will do fractions, I just enter them just like they're uh, division problems. Uh, one half is one divided by two. And if I want to add to that uh, one divided by three, I enter and I get the decimal equivalent. But if I want that as a fraction, if I go into the math menu right here, number one is convert to a fraction. So I just hit number one or just hit enter when it's uh, highlighted on number one there and it will convert that answer, this is my previous answer, to a fraction which is 5 6. Okay? Now, <clears throat> if I now want to do 5 6 minus a third, rather than typing in 5 divide 6, I could just hit second and then the answer. Notice that right above the negative button down here is the answer variable that always stores the previous answer. So if I hit 5 6 and then I subtract from that 1 third, that should give me a half, right? Since a half plus a third is five six, then five six minus a third should be a half. And it gives it to me as a decimal, but again, if I want it as a fraction, I can just easily convert it to a half. All right, let's talk about uh, roots. If I wanted the, the square root of uh, 196, I would hit the second button, and here's my square root. Square root of 196 is 14. And if I wanted to check uh, that uh, 14 was in fact the square root of 196, I could just square it. 
So again, I just hit the square button and it'll square that previous answer and I get 196 back. If I want the cube root of 8, you'll notice there's no cube root button on here, but under the math menu, number 4 is the cube root. So I'll hit number 4 and then I can type in the cube root of 8. I want to put a parenthesis to close that radical and that'll give me 2. The cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. If I have a higher uh, root, a higher power root, then I will um, again look under the math menu and under the math menu number 5 is the xth root. But before I go there I need to first type in the the uh, index there, in this case 4. So I want to, f to type in the 4 and then I'm going to go under the math menu and hit number 5 for the xth root and that 4 is going to be understood by the calculator to take the place of the x. So this is going to be the fourth root of 81 and you may have to enter parentheses. Uh, in this case I don't need to. And the fourth root of 81 is 3. And again I can verify that if I take 3 and raise it to the fourth power that'll be 3 times 3 which is 9 and then I have another 3 times 3 is another 9 and you know that that gives me 81. Alright so let's see how I might simplify this expression using my graphing calculator. So I have to be careful there's a lot of parentheses on this. Let me clear this out and uh, I want to enter a fraction so I need a parenthesis for my numerator and then I need 14 minus 3 and I want to multiply 3 by the absolute value. Now the absolute value is under the math menu and you'll notice you'll have some submenus up here. So if I arrow over to the right where it says uh, num for numbers, there's my absolute value ABS. So I have 14 minus 3 times the absolute value of negative 16 plus 38. And then you have to close the absolute value and I also have to close the numerator. So I have this parenthesis matching this parenthesis and that's going to be my whole numerator and I want to divide that by my whole denominator. So I need a parenthesis for the whole denominator there for uh, again the absolute values under the math menu over where it says numbers, number one there. Four times the absolute value of negative two raised to the fourth power. And notice that this is, you remember your order of operations, you, your base here is two. So two to the fourth is 16. This should be a negative 16 minus nine, all right? and then I'll subtract from that the 3 squared. Okay, so this just closed the absolute value. I need another parenthesis to close the denominator. Alright, so when I do that I get negative 0.52 and if I want it as a fraction I'll just go to the math menu and do it, convert it to a fraction as negative 13 25ths. Okay, so that's a negative 13 25ths and I'll let you guys check that out on your own that it really does simplify to that. Alright, uh, the last thing I want to show you in this uh, brief lesson is how we can use our calculator to evaluate expressions. Alright, so notice that if I was to plug uh, x equals negative 2 in this I'd get 11 minus 2 minus 3 times negative 2 squared. So this is 11 minus 2 and then the negative 3 times a negative 2 is plus 6 so 11 minus and then 2 plus 6 is 8 squared. So 11 minus 64 should be a negative 53. Well, let's see if we can get that on our calculator. Uh, so let's, uh, I want x to be negative 2. So here's how I'm going to do this. And this ends up being really uh, a handy operation. I'm going to type in negative 2 first and then I'm going to store that as the variable x. Now x, you can either hit alpha and then go find the X button, which is right above the store button right there. Okay, oops, I forgot to hit the second button. Oops, and that was the wrong button too. I need to hit the alpha button and the X. All right, or I could just type negative 2 store. And because you use X so often, they put a special key right here. And I can just hit the X right there as well. Well, either way, that stores... Uh, the number negative 2 in the variable location x. And so now I can just type 11 minus parenthesis 2 minus 3x 
squared, and that should give me exactly the same negative 53. Okay, and it does. Uh, it, I could do the same thing with a uh, uh, another variable, like in this case, negative 2n squared. If I want to evaluate that for n equals negative 3, then I would put negative 3, and I would store that as alpha n. So here's your n right here. Hit enter. And then I could type in negative 2 alpha n squared uh, plus 4n. So I have to, have to hit the alpha button to get the n each time. Minus 7. And that's just going to replace the n with a negative 3, and that gives me negative 37. And most people uh, recognize that this is the same thing as just plugging uh, x equals negative 3 into negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 7. So I could do that a little easier. I don't have to hit the alpha button if I hit you know, negative 3 and I just store that as x and then just type it in in terms of x instead of in terms of n. Negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 7, and that should give me the same negative 37. Okay?